I'm Dylan and welcome to Twisted Rich Garage. What's up guys and thanks for joining me on another episode of Twisted Wrench Garage. Uh, a few days ago I came out, got a few things done to the truck. I uh, got the uh, plug wires all cut and mounted and put in their place and got all the wiring and stuff kind of sorted. And I also put that coil over on that passenger fender over there and rerouted re the wires over to it. Got all that set up. Uh, we were really kind of at a standstill because we were waiting on a couple of things to come in from uh, Wichita. A buddy of mine snagged up uh, some stuff that I needed, um, but I'll throw in the I'll throw in the I'll, I'll throw in the clips of me doing some of that stuff, um, and then we'll get back to what we're doing today. Um, gonna try to get as much as I can done today. I do need to get to the tire shop. Um, I, I was able to find some 20s from my from my red truck. I've had them for a little while. Just been kind of plan and get try, trying to get everything set up for me to be able to get them put on my truck um, but I got all those wheels painted I got all the wheels for this painted thanks to uh, blasting company here in Oklahoma City okay blastings or okay blasters I'll get you guys the, the exact name uh, but they took care of me 175 bucks I got all all eight my eight, all eight of my wheels blasted did, did them really fast I think I dropped them off at like noon right around lunchtime they were done by three these guys work really fast. If you guys need any kind of blast work, anything like that, definitely hit them up. So the only reason I know how to do this is because of Vice Group Garage. Thank you, Derek. Um, I appreciate all the knowledge that you've shared with us. Um, it comes in really handy. Uh, hopefully one day I can do some sort of video with you, buddy. I really would, would appreciate that. Uh, but when it comes to uh, testing these coils, uh, you have the primary winding, which is on the outside. Then you have the, se the secondary winding, which is going to be a smaller into the center. Um, and we need to test both of those. So on the ohm meter here, we're actually, gonna, we're actually gonna go to the ohm setting, which is the little horseshoe. We're gonna set it to the 200. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our negative lead or our neutral on our positive, and then red on the negative. And we've got 1.3, 1.4, right into that 1.2 1.4 range uh, on that there for the secondaries and that's a good number there if it was like in the negatives or anything like that then definitely would be bad uh, I did a little bit of research and from what I found the numbers on that are good on the secondary winding we need to switch it up to the 200 K and then we're going to leave our black on our positive side of the coil and then we're gonna stick this down into our center and that'll give us our secondary, which is 12.7, which is also good. So this coil should be good to go and work just fine for us. Uh, we wanna get it mounted over there in that corner, like I said, and we can get a uh, coil wire going up and over to our new distributor. So let's get to work on getting some of that taken care of. I've got our new plugs all slapped in both sides and they're snug. Um, the spark plug wire kit i've shown you guys this before this is the one we're going with this this uh street fire spark plug by msd uh it's supposed to work with both uh msd and non-msd hei non-hei sorry um comes with all the crimps and all the hardware you need all the boots the ones that we're going to be using don't have the little nipple at the very end we're just going to be using the flat ones here and then we'll be using the clamps that go to those and there is a little tool that they throw in here for you to use um, that you throw into a vise and then you that's how you crimp your ends and call that good so and it also has a little cutter on the end of it so you can cut them and then strip them back so you get this cable back the way it is here so let me get these strung out here let me see uh how we're gonna get this all set up all right guys i spent some time got all those wires cut to length got them ran where they need to run um they just went ahead and set them up one eight four three six five seven two to our firing order this one here is our number one 
we just went around we got our coil kind of set over there i think that's where i'm going to put it i got some bolts i need to drill out the new location for that uh, and then i can bolt that down i also uh got that transmission dipstick put dipstick to put into place i had to cut off uh, about i want to say about that much off of the end uh, it was for 727 transmission but when i went to go put it in it the the base of it was hitting a part of the pan because the pan like comes in a little bit on that so i had to cut it down some and i just went ahead and used the two o rings that were with it and then i put some uh, rtv around that just to kind of seal it make sure there was no leaks and i've got it self tapped over there to the inner fender and then we've got our coil over there where it's kind of kind of in place because i think this is where it's gonna go because i've got all the others ran I think the coil wind up going just about like so. I'll probably I'll probably leave all that length on there just to be safe. And then that way it's kinda kinda hitting there. But I do need to put the end on that. But I think get it in the right spot where I want it. I think that right there will probably be pretty good. So mark this in here all right I got a little mark in there pre-drill this That one started, I can kind of position this. Drill my other hole. Right. Now we have both holes. I'm gonna go ahead and pop that back off and just wall that one out. Now we can bolt this down for its final location. Snug that up. What, half inch? Ow. Uh, but we're going to try to get some of this onto the truck today. Um, ben, was, ben was actually able snag me up a actual an actual four barrel um, throttle and kick down bracket as well as that plug I needed for my steering column so I can actually use the ignition um, he also was able to snag me a grill surround a driver headlight bezel which isn't in the best shape but it's all right those things are hard to find as is and that one's all right for me 
Um, I also grabbed a passenger mirror because uh, my passenger mirror is actually missing the glass altogether. So I think first things first, I'm gonna get this plug put into the truck. Let's see if we can't get uh, a face on this girl. This one does have a little bit of a kink to it, but it'll be fine. I was able to find some screws that should work for me here. And get these started up here. light checks later. There we go. And these take four screws. Some over here. same shape as the other one this is a black set black inside one too and I do plan on painting that so another something we can get to later oh, the headlight needs to be adjusted on this side it's all the way in are we missing the spring There we go. 
bent a little bit. Oh, where is it? Side. This is busted right here. I don't want to break it further. So that's going to be good enough for now. Now the center section, it's going to be a different story because these there's some tabs up here on top that are broken. So I'm going to grab a drill and I'm going to see about drilling some holes for some zip ties so we can zip tie it. This is what I mean by these tabs have broken off. So I'm just gonna drill some new holes. There's one. About felt. We got one here we need to do. We can get some zip ties and get this grill insert in. Condenser, we can also reach behind. pretty good. That headlight over there still needs adjusted. I don't think it's in the right spot. But the 
grill is on and it's looking a lot better. Well, we ran out of time yesterday, so I went ahead and, uh, what I did yesterday is I went ahead and got all the U-joints out of the drive shaft, and I also rolled it underneath there to make sure it was the right length. Because this, this truck has two different possibilities, the transmissions, either a 727 or a 904. Both, both have a short and a long tail shaft, so I had to, I had to make sure. Uh, this did fit, uh, so I got all those knocked out. Real easy to knock them out. I know I didn't show it on camera. I, I was recording over on the other side. There's a, there's a radio going over there, so I don't want to break any copyright things. Um, so I did go ahead and get those knocked out. There's clips on the inside. You have to pull, pop, pop out, and then you can start getting it out. Uh, big socket on this end. Little socket to hammer out one end. Pull, pull it out that way. We're just gonna go ahead and do the opposite here. Try not to get our needle bearings all over the place. Take one off. We're gonna do this joint first. Actually, I think I gotta take both of them off. It's been a while since I've actually did any kind of U-joint uh, installs. Got this one in far enough, I just need to slip that clip in. Let me grab that. Well guys, that's it for today in this episode of Twister Ranch Garage. Uh, do have that U-joint up front, got that all taken care of. I've got the one for the back. Uh, it's actually at the Yukon O'Reilly's. They didn't have them both here in El Reno. So I'll snag that up, I'll come out and I'll knock that out. Uh, but, got some progress done. Got, got the front end all put back together. Um, went ahead and replaced the negative cable. Went ahead and replaced the, our positive terminal itself. The bracket for the throttle and kick down, unfortunately, is not going to work. Um, I'm going to need that rod that actually goes down to the transmission. Apparently, they're longer, too. I, sh I should have known that, but it is what it is. Did go ahead and replace the mirror uh, with the with that one that Ben snagged us, because this one obviously isn't going to be showing us nothing. But also a little sneak peek for you guys, because this is something that's going to be coming, coming to the truck. Let me get around to the other side. But yesterday, we got to see these. This is something that's going to go on the truck. Now, who likes little stacks? I do. These are going to look good on here. I got, I got a lot of the piping that I need for it, but I'm going to have to figure that all out. So it's going to be a little challenging, but just a little sneak peek of some of the exhaust work that's going to come. But, oh, get that back in there. And, but you know, like I said, we got some progress done. 
really close to firing up. Got that collect, that plug in there for the column. Um, just a few other things I need to sort out wiring wise underneath here. Really, it's just the oil pressure switch. Um, trying to decide what I'm gonna do with that because there's two, there's two, there's two gate, there's two sensors. One, there's a pressure switch and then a light switch, which goes in the back, but it requires like a tower so you can put both of them in and then wire them both up. But I'd like to just get an oil pressure gauge and, and put that in there. So we'll see about maybe trying to snag one of those up. But again. That's it for this episode of Twister Wrench Garage. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. We'll check you guys out on the next episode.